Hey everyone, you're with Tesla Tom. Thanks for joining us on Ludicrous Feed. Today I wanted to talk to you about a uh, fellow by the name of Weibo Wacker. Uh, for those who don't know him, he's a Dutch fellow from the Netherlands. Uh, he has been on the road for almost two and a half years now and his aim is to get to Australia from the Netherlands in an electric vehicle. Let me read to you uh, his post on the Tesla owner's Facebook page. So, uh, Weibo writes, super excited to share that I reached Australia today in an electric car after 827 days coming from the Netherlands. March 2016 I left my home and started driving to Australia with a mission to dispel the myth that electric vehicles cannot match their fossil fuel powered cousins when it comes to endurance. I am proud to say that I reached the other side of the world and crossed 33 countries on my way. For me the most important thing though, all the people I've met, the energy they shared with me, the life experience I got and many many memorable stories. I'm not there yet as my ultimate goal is to reach Sydney but I do think that I've slightly proven that you now should definitely be able to drive an electric car to your supermarket smiley face. Follow the final leg of my journey on Plug Me In at Australia. So there he is, I assume, in Darwin uh, with a uh, pumped fist, uh, with the happiness that he's reached Australia. That car behind him he has nicknamed the Blue Bandit. Um, it's essentially a modified 2009 uh, electric uh, Volkswagen Golf and it has a range of 37 kilowatt hours which is about um, 200 kilometers of range and he also has a map of the places he's been to as he says he's been on the road for two, 827 days and he's visited 33 countries and traveled 66,000 kilometers and zero fuel stations used that's fantastic and look at his map here he's traveled all the way um, down to Italy and then back up through to Scandinavia back down again through Eastern Europe um, through Russia the Ukraine and then across the Middle East, um, skipped a bit through, uh, I guess, Pakistan and into India, uh, and then through to Southeast Asia, and then um, by boat, presumably, a couple of times through the Indonesian archipelago, and uh, he's finally in Australia, which is fantastic news. Uh, I'll, I'm going to try to catch up with him when he reaches Sydney. So how, how this works is that he um, essentially has a website where he uses social media to uh, advertise or to promote what he's doing. And then you, if you want to help him by providing food, shelter, um, or a place to charge his car, then you can register your interest on that website. By the way, he has no money, so he's done this all through the goodwill of people across the um, across the world. Um, it's just a fascinating story. I mean, uh, you know, he he just he shares on a um, on one of the news sites uh, called EcoBusiness.com, and he talks about um, his experience uh, of driving this car through the world. Um, so it says here, around the world in an electric car, Weirbeer Wacker, a 30-year-old Dutchman, has travelled 51 kilometres through 28 countries on a journey from the Netherlands to Australia in an electric car, relying on donations of food, a bed and electricity to get him here. So this, this article is from 2017, but uh, that's him in Penang in Malaysia. And um, see, see, it talks about the fact that he relies on others for, um, for his journey. Um, and there it says he's got his 37-kilowatt-hour um, Volkswagen Golf. Um, this article was in Singapore, which is interesting. He was talking about how Singapore, uh, for such a first world country, doesn't have the infrastructure for electric vehicles. Um, there's a lot of barriers to getting an electric vehicle to, um, to Singapore. Um, and he talks about range uh, e excitement rather than anxiety. So he talks about the fact that he um, looking forward to his next charge. So he says here, I, I travel from one host to another usually, but sometimes I have to travel up to 800 kilometers without anyone to meet me. In the morning I start driving and I wait until I have 10% battery left and then I have to make a plan. That's called range excitement. Well, I must say I, I, I love my electric vehicles but I still have some anxiety and I certainly wouldn't be um, excited about where my next child will come from. But hats off to him, he's done really well. Um, and he talks about uh, the different countries that he goes through. Uh, Europe was pretty easy, he said, especially in Scandinavia. Uh, Russia wasn't easy. There are only two cities, Moscow and St. Petersburg, with um, electric charging stations. Um, Asia was reasonable. He said Malaysia had some charging stations. Uh, none in Myanmar. Difficult in India. In Thailand was interesting because um, foreign um, drivers couldn't drive without an escort um, from a government official and they had to stay in hotels. Um, he had a breakdown in India, which was difficult because there were no spare parts, obviously, for his car. Um, there's a picture of him trying to unload the car from a warehouse in India. Fantastic picture. Um, highlight of the tour was in Iran, interestingly. Um, showing off his car to, um, to people in that country. Um, 
and then he went through the United Arab Emirates and um, then he talks about the fact that he's getting to Australia as well and he said what's the most interest what's the most important thing you've learned on your travels the prejudice about electric cars is wrong it is actually possible to travel long distances in an electric car and at least in developed countries I've come to realize that it's easier to drive an electric car than a petrol car finding a petrol station is not as easy as finding a plug socket as, as soon as you get your thinking around that fact that there are actually plug sockets everywhere uh, you, you can charge your car it's slow but you can still charge your car if there's any electric socket anywhere Whereas a petrol station, you've actually got to get to, to somewhere. That's the kind of world we live in, live in where we've been brainwashed a little bit to think uh, it's difficult to drive an electric car. But yeah, he's right. You can plug your car in overnight and uh, you, you'll have pretty close to full charge in the morning. So look, hats off to Weeby Wacker. Uh, very impressed. And uh, I'll keep following his journey and hopefully try to catch up with him when he reaches Sydney. Uh, it's just a fascinating story. And if he can do it, you know, <laughs> in a first world country like Australia, United States, United Kingdom, New Zealand, South Africa, um, Japan, anywhere in uh, in Europe, uh, especially in Western Europe. You know, if you've got an electric vehicle, I think that's certainly the way of the future. All right, guys. Well, thank you for watching. Uh, it's a lovely day here in Sydney. It's actually the winter solstice, the shortest day here in Australia, um, or at least in the Southern Hemisphere. And uh, I hope it's a lovely day where you are as well. And as always, happy charging. Hey, thanks for watching. And thank you for helping us to bring the electric vehicle revolution to Australia. If you've enjoyed our videos, please take a moment to hit subscribe. We would really appreciate it. If you're close to buying a brand new Tesla, then lucky you. Use one of our promo codes on screen to unlock special goodies from Tesla. Happy charging!